prime time local news serving the lakeland and midwest regions good evening and thank you for joining us we begin tonight with an update from the maidstone rcmp regarding a collision that took place yesterday afternoon on highway 16 one kilometer west of maidstone police say a truck and snowplow collided on and a second truck then collided with the snowplow Two female passengers of the second pickup were pronounced dead on scene, while the driver and another passenger were transported to hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The driver of the other truck was also sent to hospital with non-life-threatening injuries, while the snowplow's driver was not injured. Highway 16 has now reopened and the RCMP continue to investigate. Now, a lot of residents in Lloydminster probably spent a lot of the day digging out after all the snow we got. Now, here's Shelby Clark with a look at your weather forecast. Thanks so much, Jason. Now taking a first look at your weather forecast. Yes, we got lots of snowfall, so hopefully everybody is outside driving carefully, uh, trying to be able to dig themselves out. Hopefully everybody's got some nice warm and safety equipment in their vehicles, just in case of so many uh, getting stuck beside the road there. But we are sitting at minus 28. With that wind chill, it does feel close to minus 40. So as I was saying, please make sure you are bundling up outside and trying to stay warm. Switching over to temperatures across the region for Alberta and Saskatchewan. On the Alberta side, we are cooling down quite a bit. Uh, most are seeing around minus 27 degrees at the moment, minus 30 in Vagerville and Lac La Biche, while Edmonton is sitting at minus 28 degrees and St. Paul's at minus 29 and down in Provost they're sitting at minus 25. Switching over to the Saskatchewan side here, they're seeing around the same temperatures as what we are seeing on the Alberta side, uh, minus 29 up in Isle Crosse, while there's minus 26 and minus 28 in most spots on the map for Saskatchewan side. Uh, Pearsland is at minus 27 degrees and North Balfour is seeing minus 25 there. But for North Battle for overnight they will be going down to a low of minus 31 so they will be cooling down quite a bit as well like we are we are here in the border city uh, with that wind chill it will feel close to minus 43 degrees and they will be feeling uh, they will be able to have some frostbite within minutes in most spots across the region so please be careful if you are going to be outside whatsoever throughout the evening tomorrow they will be cooling down once again to minus 30 with a mix of some sun and cloud switching over to cold lake they'll be going down to a low of minus 32 feeling like minus 43 as well with that wind chill tomorrow they will be seeing minus 20 once again and they will be uh, seeing a little bit more sun peaking behind those clouds and if you're here in the border city we'll be seeing the coolest with a low of minus 34 feeling like minus 44 and we will be having as well uh, we are in that extreme cold warning in effect as well so we will be having that frostbite within minutes in case you are outside make sure you are bundling up tomorrow we will be seeing a mix of some sun and cloud and now switching over to our three-day forecast as I was saying we will be cooling down quite a bit Thursday we'll be seeing our coolest there with minus 34 and a low of minus 40 with a little bit more cloud coverage and Friday we will be seeing a high chance of some snowfall once again at minus 27. That's the first look at your weather forecast. We'll have more coming up after the break. Welcome back. The Lloydminster Agricultural Exhibition Association is already looking ahead to cattle shows in 2022. As a new networking event called The Cattleman's Call will debut in the new year. For a preview of what to expect, here's Jillian Code. Today on Primetime Local News, I'm joined by Shelly Ann Dodgson. She's the Agricultural Manager with the Lloyd Exhibition here in town. Today we're talking about a new event that's coming into the Lloyd X this January. Shelly Ann, what can you tell me about The Cattleman's Call? Cattleman's Call was a project um, developed and was the, I guess, dream child of both Graydon Kay and Sydney Lake, which are our committee chair and vice chair. It was um, an event that we felt that the Lloyd Minster exhibition needed to spearhead um, to bring commercial cattlemen and purebred breeders together in, a, in, a, in one spot where they could market and visit and have some hospitality and just have a very, um, you know, non-threatening type of way of coming in and marketing their cattle. A lot of people, a lot of our, we found that a lot of our um, clientele are having on-farm, um, on-farm sales, farm gate sales, private treaty sales, or they're just selling them now uh, on their farm and they're not using the Lloydminster um, facility as much as they used to. So. We felt that if we could bring them all together in one place where 
Um, it was like a one-stop shop. Um, they could see some, um, uh, pro, uh, what do you want to say? Different progeny of the bulls, those types of things. It's really, it's really a event to bring the bull buyers to the breeders and the producers. I guess that's the best way of saying it. Yeah, so it's like a one-stop shop. Uh, so this event is scheduled for January 14th and 15th. What events do you guys have planned? Okay, so we have shows on Friday, which um, we are going to have a what we call the Winter Classic. It's a heifer jackpot show. Um, so any heifers born in 2021 are eligible as long as they are purebred, uh, carry purebred or recorded papers. So it's a jackpot show. Um, to start off the program and then we're going to go into our rising stars show which is going to highlight um, our 2021 bull calves um, the show is going to be shown breed um, specific and then they'll go for an overall champion and then we end the day with our um, barn social in the evening our bs social in the evening uh, really looking forward to that um, one of our big sponsors, our title, two title sponsors this year are Natural Resources. I mean, Canadian Natural Resources as well as Scotiabank. So we're really excited to have those two, those two um, companies as partners with our program. And then on Saturday, we're going to get into kind of the two-year-old show, um, our pen shows, as well as a progeny, Breeders Herd and a progeny, uh, Sire with Progeny uh, pen class. So those are what's happening on the Saturday. So this event is joining um, a long list of cattle events at the Lloyd Exhibition. Why is something like this so important to the Lloyd X? I think networking is probably our primary um, number, primary concern. We want to get the breeders and the commercial man or the purebred stock to purebred um, breeders. That is one of our ultimate um, goals. I think one of the big things is we want to make it um, easy for both the, the producer and the um, buyers to be able to meet in a non-threatening kind of atmosphere where they can chat and talk and be able to make those connections because the connections you make today might be the big sale that happens next fall type of thing. So it's all, it's all part of um, intertwining and getting people involved in agriculture specifically and then also getting them involved in meeting new people and seeing seeing new breeders and and what's out there for genetics and and for registration when and how can people do that so registrations opened on the first of december it's all online through assist expo which is has a link directly on our web page so if you go to the lloyd x uh, dot com webpage and look for the cattleman's call there's a register button there and you just follow along. It's a, very similar to our Stockade Roundup entry, for, entry program. Great. Shellyan, thank you so much for your time today. <laughs> you bet. And you guys take care and have a Merry Christmas. And now here are your agriculture prices for today. Hockey fans the world over were disappointed when the World Juniors were cancelled. I spoke with our sports reporter Evan Kenny to discuss what happened and what the next steps are for the IIHF. Wednesday, January 5th would have been the gold medal game for the IIHF World Juniors taking place in Edmonton. Now with the event cancelled, I'm joined by our sports reporter Evan Kenny for the first sports panel of the new year. Evan, it's great to have you here with us. Yeah, it's nice to be here, Jace. Just unfortunate that uh, it is in these circumstances, really. Yeah, definitely not the news that hockey fans wanted to hear. So starting off, can you kind of give us a rundown of what took place uh, last Wednesday? Yeah, Jace, like you said, last Wednesday, uh, December 29th, is when the IIHF shut down the 2022 World Junior Championship. But really, Jace, it goes back a little bit further than that. Uh, you know, 11 pre-tournament games were canceled before the tournament had even begun. Uh, those were going to begin, uh, I believe, on the 22nd. And instead, they got pushed back and they had to play on the 24th for their uh, 
pre-tournament games there. So really, it went back to there. Day one of the tournament sort of went off without a hitch when it comes to a COVID uh, perspective. However, day two, two Americans tested positive, uh, and they were forced to um, to forfeit their game against Switzerland. Uh, from there, day three was fine, and then day four is really when, when things hit the fan, uh, to say the least. Uh, a player from Czechia tested positive, which uh, made them forfeit their game against Finland. And then later on, a Russian player tested positive, so they had to cancel their game uh, against Slovakia. Now, Jace, since the tournament has ended, uh, six different tests have come in uh, as positives from players within this tournament. Uh, and it was from five different countries. Uh, because of this, every single country participating in the World Juniors this year had at least one positive test. Uh, and it equals out to 16 total positives uh, between players and other people around the tournament. Now, since this news came out, uh, obviously disappointing news. What has reaction been like uh, throughout the hockey world? Well, Jay says you can only expect a lot of people were not happy with it, this decision, uh, specifically players and coaches, uh, you know, members of each coaching staff and team, uh, you know, throughout this tournament. One Slovakian goalie took to social media criticizing the Double IHF. You know, he said. He had put, trained years and years, you know, missed time with family around the holidays for this tournament and for it to be ripped out of his hands, uh, he felt was not fair. And then as well, Scott Wheeler, a reporter for The Athletic, uh, he said that the tournament wasn't ne necessarily a COVID issue. However, it was a tournament planning issue uh, and a number of coaches, specifically the Finnish head coach and the USA uh, head coach agreed with him on this point now apparently uh, there was a wedding going on in the same hotel that a number of teams within the tournament were staying at um, so players and just the, the general public were in contact with one another now let's talk about the future plans for the 2022 world juniors i know the IIHF used the word cancelled when it comes to this tournament but is there any uh, possibility that this could be put off put on sometime maybe in the summer yeah, Jace, you know, you bring up that it was canceled. The double IHF specifically said that this event was canceled. Not necessarily that the World Juniors of 2022 was canceled, but just this December, January event. So uh, double IHF president Luke Tardif, uh, he said that the Federation wants a month or so. With this time, you know, they can see what things are like COVID wise. Uh, and as well, they have a month now to pretty much game plan and see what the possibilities are. Now, sort of the hope and the thought of this time uh, is that Canada will host once again uh, coming up in the summer. But like I said, that's just a hope or a thought. They, they really still need to iron out a lot of wrinkles. And this is a tournament that always takes place during the holidays, so it'd be interesting to see uh, what it would feel like to have it not take place over that Christmas, New Year's time. Now, uh, it's unfortunate that we didn't get to see the tournament continue throughout uh, all the way through to the championship, but from what you saw, who stood out on the ice? Jace, there's a couple uh, very, very apparent all-stars, or rather future NHL all-stars who played in this tournament, specifically two historic players uh, in Owen Power and Connor Bedard. Owen Power, I mean, six foot five, and he's mobile. He walks the line as if he's Kale McCarr, uh, and he thinks 10 steps ahead as well. His patience was just through the roof. Uh, he really put on his display being the first Canadian uh, to score a hat trick at the World Juniors. Pretty impressive feat. And then uh, Connor Bedard, like I mentioned, you know, joined a club with only Wayne Gretzky, just Connor Bedard and Wayne Gretzky. That's okay company to be with uh, as the only 16 year old players to score four goals in a game and Jace you know from watching him you could not even tell he was 16 years old he was getting in the gritty areas he was thinking through the roof and he showed his NHL uh, level shot there a couple other guys from Team Canada specifically that I really liked uh, Mason McTavish he looked like a man among boys um, you know physically dominating other players out there and then there was a WHL line filled with neighbors Greg and Sourdough. Uh, I really liked all these guys just from the point of view of when you move up to that NHL level there's already you know two lines of all-star goal scoring wingers you have to be able to bring a different element to your game and I thought all three of those guys um, did taking a look at a couple players from different countries who impressed me 
Brad Lambert, uh, the Finland player whose family is actually from Kindersley. Brad Lambert, not really a Finnish name, uh, but he had amazing vision, a couple beautiful passes uh, for Team Finland, and then a couple of Swedes and Simon Edvinson, a big mobile D-man who even scored a shorthanded goal, just showing his mobility there. Uh, and Jesper Wallstead, the goaltender, he is a giant, but moves like he's about five foot ten, can get post to post uh, like it's nothing. He went two and zero in the tournament, only allowing three goals, uh, and in one of those games, he did get a shutout. Yeah, it was great to see Connor Bedard get that hat trick in a blowout against Austria, and what happened to be the last game uh, of the tournament. So, Evan, unfortunate ending to how things went, but it's great to talk to you. Yeah, thank you, Jace. And now here's Shelby Clark with another look at your weather forecast. Much, Jason. Now taking another look at your weather forecast um, for Saskatchewan and Alberta. It has been an extreme cold warning in effect across both provinces here. On the Alberta side, we are cooling down quite a bit with minus 28 in Edmonton and Athabasca. Most spots are seeing minus 27 degrees right now, and it is minus 26 in Jasper and Rocky Mountain House. Now switching over to the Saskatchewan side here for our central region, uh, Meadow Lake is at that minus 28 point as well. Minus 27 in Cold Lake, while it is minus 25 in Prince Albert and North Battleford, and minus 24 in Saskatoon and Melford there. Now switching over to our northern region of the provinces, as you can see, they've cooled down quite a bit. Most have reached past that minus 30 point, even without that wind chill there. Uh, Wilson Lake is at minus 29 degrees, while the rest are seeing around minus 31, minus 30 degrees. And Uranium City is the coolest, seeing minus 33. Switching over to this side here, usually down in this area here, they do see sometimes some warmer temperatures compared, but they have cooled down quite a bit, of course, as we are headed more uh, right into the winter season right now. Uh, Slave Lake is at minus 29 while most spots are seeing minus 32 degrees minus 30 in Grand Prairie while Fort Chippewan is at minus 31 and high level is the coolest like uranium city there sitting at minus 33 now switching over to our southern region they are seeing some cool temperatures as well they are still past that minus 20 point uh, minus 24 in Lethbridge while it's minus 25 in Calgary and Medicine Hat minus 22 in Banff and Coronation has almost reached that minus 30 point switching over to this side here they're seeing some slightly cooler temperatures as well but they are still mildly a little bit uh, warmer compared. Uh, Estevan is even sitting at minus 19 right now. It is minus 20 in Regina, while it is minus 21 in Moose Jaw, and the rest have cooled, uh, cooled down more. Uh, getting close to minus 24 in most spots on the map. But now as we go back across the region, the temperatures overnight tonight with that wind chill, it will feel close uh, over uh, minus 40 for most spots across the region while we are seeing past those minus 30 points for our lows. Unity will be seeing a low of minus 31 as well as an eye lacrosse, a low of minus 33 degrees for Pearsland and Bonneville, a low of minus 35 degrees for most spots there while Murnham will be seeing a low of minus 36 degrees and most spots will be seeing uh, cloudier skies and Wainwright will also be seeing a low of minus 36 as well. Now looking at temperatures tomorrow across the region, we will be cooling down once again, uh, ranging from around minus 28 to minus 31 degrees in most spots on the map. So as I was saying, make sure you are bundling up and staying warm out there. Make sure you are driving careful. And now ending off with our seven day forecast for here in the border city. Wednesday, we'll be seeing minus 30. We'll be seeing our coolest day on Thursday there with a lot more uh, cloudier skies and a low of minus 40 even. Friday, we'll be starting off this weekend a lot cooler with minus 27 with a high chance of some flurries. Then Saturday and Sunday, we'll be seeing the uh, cold pattern continue while well, next week hopefully we will warm up hopefully it won't switch up but you know us it probably will monday we'll be seeing minus 13 and next tuesday we'll be seeing minus six so that's another look at your weather forecast we'll have more coming up after the break I'm joined here now with Anne Scotland, and she is an author, a motivational coach, as well as an actress. But, you know, speaking about you being a motivational coach, just how did you get your start in that? I started teaching at some acting studios, and I started realizing there was this huge need for artists and creatives to understand the business side of things. And so I started coaching them, and we also had a business background. 
And that was kind of how it was born. Um, you know, I hadn't gotten sort of certified. I was just working for the studio. And then over time, I was just like, this is so exciting to be encouraging people, helping them find their dream, whatever that is, um, helping them find those practical steps to make it happen. So um, after a few years and I moved, so I wasn't teaching at that studio anymore. So then I went and um, got my all my executive got my certification from the College of Executive Coaching so I could do business or creatives. And um, and then it just kind of bloomed and blossomed out of there into coaching, consulting, and I started specializing in emotional wellness and joy. And that's kind of how the book was born. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of your book, Live for Joy, you know, just released back there at this closer to the start of the year. And, and it was an Amazon bestseller, but just what can readers expect if they're picking up your book for the first time? Yeah, well, I was really wanting to write a book that was a personal empowerment book, but that would give you written and visual thought, even if you only had a minute or two, because everybody has a minute or two. <laughs> and, but we don't always have time to read a whole chapter or even listen to a whole chapter in the car. So I was like, what can you give like a quick dose of information and visual? Cause I am an artist and an actor and I am a very visual person. So when I can combine the two, there's kind of like a twofold punch, like you really get something to chew on. So, um, so I wanted something that was poignant, but also like thought provoking and inspiring. So um, the book is really about living a present and authentic life, just really finding the best version of yourself. And it's um, 285 pages, it has 12 chapters. And it's just a beautiful way to kind of learn how to be the kind of person you're proud of, like an authentic person. Um, someone who wants to make a difference in the world, someone who has good reasons to get up in the morning. And it's beautiful. I will show up here. Yeah, here's the cover. And this is the soft bound. The hard cover is even beautiful. And there's also a digital version, but it's just beautiful. And um, inside, you'll find anytime you just, you know, basically pop open a page, you'll see there is um, some either really cool digital art or photography and then something that goes along with it. So like in this case, what that one says is, what we perceive as reality is often merely just a projection of our own expectations. What you expect is what you often think you're experiencing. And then um, I'm a huge nature lover. So there's also just lots and lots of really beautiful um, nature photography. Like this is just like a beautiful um, scenery. But I also like really unique art. Sometimes there's something that's just sort of so thought provoking. It needs something really unique to express the idea. So it's just kind of, it's kind of a full experience. You can sit with it for a minute. I know a lot of my clients, they'll have it on their bedside table or their coffee table or their desk. And they'll just be like, you know, today I'm just going to read. And you get kind of a powerful punch. You can pick from the 12 topics. Like, where are you at today? Like, what kind of message do you need today? And just go there and grab one. So that's kind of the point. And speaking of the 12 topics and the 12 ways that you touch upon in your book, now that we're into the new year, are you hoping that people integrate this into their new year's resolution? Absolutely. Because I think we've had such a tough couple of years and a lot of people are just kind of discouraged. Some people still are feeling isolated. And it's like, how do I reconnect with the world? And like, what is my purpose? And like, how do I, how can I make a difference and also enjoy my life? Like getting the joy back, right? So there's so many different great chapters. Um, one of them is about is called um, Be a Benevolent World Citizen. Be a Benevolent World Citizen. So it's very much about how you can draw joy from giving and participating. Now that can be in person, that can be virtual, depends on your circumstances and what's going on where you live. But it's kind of like when you start giving back, when you start kind of opening up your mind to have broader perspective and connect with people on what we have in common because so much over the last two to three to four to six years <laughs> has been about everything is negative and it's just like all we think about is like well that person isn't like me and they're causing this problem and that person disagrees with me and that's like totally sucks and like all we see is opposing views on everything under the sun so what about connecting to a human being just based on what you have in common? You know, you also have your podcast, The Power of Joy. And for so for somebody who hasn't got the chance to listen yet, is this kind of the lessons that you continue to teach in the podcast and that you want people to take away while they listen? Yes. So the podcast is very cool. And it's, it's very much real life issues and how do we address them? 
Um, I think one of the last ones I had was um, how to escape a bad mood. It was what it was, it was escaping the bad mood. Like how, when you're just in a bad mood, like, cause we all have bad mood, like, like let's get real down to earth. Let's not too much pie in the sky here. Like what is a practical application? And it talks about your point of view and your behavior and practices and how you can really get out of a bad mood. So it's very practical application. Well, if anyone is looking to get the book or just listen to the podcast, where should they go? Absolutely. So you can get the book on Amazon. Again, it's called Live for Joy and uh, by Anne Scotland, A-N-N-E. S-C-O-T-T-L-I-N. I also can get it on my website or check out more about me at annscotland.com. And if you want a little taste, you can get my free gift on my website, which is a really cool one week joy journal, which just creates more joy awareness for you, how to connect to it, how to get away from the things that are taking it away. So you can get that at um, annscotland.com slash joy journal, download it for free digital, or you can print it out. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Anne. Thank you so much. I so appreciate talking to you, Jasmine. It's just been so much fun. Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery and Furniture House, downtown Lloydminster. Joining us today for Primetime Local News is Ryan Armstrong, and we're speaking about a junior curling bonds field that's coming at the end of the month held at the Golf and Curling Center. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Now, for all the curling fans out there and they're interested in this one, seeing it online, what exactly is all involved in this? So this has been a long running junior bonds field in Lloyd Minster. Um, by junior, there's two age categories, 14 and under and 20 and under. And so those dates are as of December 31st, 2021. So if you're 14 and under, you can play in that division or you can play in the older division. And then the 20 and under is a separate division. And um, we look to get 16 teams out in each um, age category this year. When and how exactly did this idea start up for your group to have this for youth, especially in the community? Well, this bond spiel has been running. I, we were trying to figure it out the other night. I think it's at least 35 years, um, possibly a lot longer in various forms but uh viv backer was a long time uh curling coach junior curling instructor in in lloyd minster uh she taught me when i was younger and so um that bond spiel had been continued on by um other individuals and then it uh, my siblings and myself uh picked up running it about uh, seven or eight years ago and now after having this for so many years in the community you must have seen some strong support in the past how has support been so far this year um, it's been really good. You know, we didn't get a chance to run it in 2021 uh, due to the COVID pandemic. We did run it in January of 2020. Um, so we missed a year, which is probably the first year in three or four decades. But um, it was uh, great to run that event um, when we had. We want to run it again. And the support's been phenomenal. We have various corporate sponsors, trophy sponsors, um, different event skills sponsors that always step up to sponsor the bonds field um, and support us uh, in, in whatever way we ask, really. And for some first timers out there that have already registered and have never done this before, what can you say that they can expect? Um, for a lot of kids, it's it's probably their first opportunity to play in a bonds field. And so we just try to make it have fun. So we try to get a door prize. Everyone wins a door prize. We have a progressive draw with some bigger prizes. Um, it's, it's really not about the, um, um, competitiveness, although certainly in the older division and, and certainly if you get into a final on Sunday, it, it, it can be a little bit more competitive, but, um, for a lot of kids, it's their first opportunity. Maybe their only opportunity to play in a bond spiel. So we just try to make it uh, fun for all the kids and have a good time out there. And this is only held at the end of January each year. It's just January 28th to 30th. So it's at the end of the month here, um, runs Friday to Sunday. Uh, the kids will probably have a game Friday to Saturday. And, and then if they make a final in the older division or make the playoffs, so to speak, they would be playing a game on Sunday. And uh, we draw from fairly good area around Lidminster, Vermilion, Chauvin, Provost, you get up to St. Paul area even. So we draw from a pretty, pretty wide range of uh, uh, schools and so forth for teams to come play. For residents wanting to find some more information and haven't registered quite yet, where can they go to find more online? Uh, yeah, so we created a, a well, there's a Google form that we've created within our advertisement on the uh, Lloydminster Curling Club Facebook page. 
And so that advertisement's on their page and there's a QR code there that you can scan as well that brings up a, the Google form to submit with the registration and the information uh, with respect to submitting that and, and, and making payment is uh, on that Facebook page. And that's the Lloydminster Curling Club Facebook page. Well, it's really great to hear about some fun things coming up here in Lloydminster, especially for the new year. And unfortunately with the pandemic continuing, is there anything else you'd like to add for people to know about? Uh, no, I mean, I guess, yeah, just to touch briefly on the pandemic, uh, junior curling was the only thing that was allowed to run last year in our club from November on. So we were able to have our junior curling program run in a very different restricted manner after school and it, it took place on multiple days. And so, you know, to sort of step that up, I guess, is the ability to now run a bond spiel um, would be great for the club, I think, to have the kids all back out and, and have a good weekend of fun in, in January here coming up. Perfect. Well, once again, thank you so much for joining us today, Ryan. Thank you for your time today, Shelby. And I'll be ending off with taking another look at tomorrow's temperatures across the region. As I was saying, we will be cooling down, ranging from around minus 28 to minus 31 in most spots on the map. So please make sure you are bundling up outside and uh, trying to stay warm. And now ending off with our seven-day forecast, we're here in the border city. Wednesday, Thursday, we'll be cooling right down to minus 30, minus 34. Even on Thursday, we'll be seeing a high chance of some flurries even throughout tonight and seeing it again on Friday. To start off that weekend, we'll be seeing a cooler weekend. Uh, and on Sunday, we'll be seeing minus 23 with a little bit more cloud coverage. While starting off next week, we hopefully will be seeing those warmer temperatures. Unless it switches up, you never know here in the border city. But Monday, we'll be seeing minus 13 with a mix of some sun and cloud. And next Tuesday, we'll even be seeing minus 6 degrees. Thanks for that, Shelby. And thank you for joining us. Our second hour continues next.